He said to her, leave the religion of Muhammad and I will let you go. She said, I'll never leave the religion of Rasulullah. He used the spear to rip the middle of her body into pieces. Isn't Sumayya alive today? Don't we have Sumayyas? Don't we have Sumayyas who are forming groups to speak out against injustice? Then there's a fourth group of women who come. They say, Sayyid Ammar, I want to be religious, but my family isn't religious. I say to them, did you not hear the story of Jamila, the daughter of Abu Amr, who was married to Hanzala, the son of Abdullah ibn Ubay? Jamila, her father was a Christian monk. She converted to the religion of Islam knowing her father was an enemy of Rasulullah. She didn't let her father's religion affect her religion. She didn't say, my dad isn't religious, therefore I can't be religious. She said, I'm going to join the religion of Rasulullah. If it means my parents are going to attack me, they're going to abuse me, they're going to hurt me. I have a Lord who will look after me on a day my parents can't. She married Hanzala, the son of Abdullah ibn Ubay, who was the chief of the hypocrites of Medina. A day before the battle of Uhud, they got married. The day after, Rasulullah announced that the Sahaba have to go and fight at the battle of Uhud. She said to her husband, go and defend Rasulullah, but stay with me for one night. When they stayed together for that one night, she had witnesses who came to see that they got married. After Rasulullah returned from Uhud, he came to her. He said to her, Jamila, I have bad news. She said, what is it? He said, your husband died as a shaheed in the battle of Uhud. She said to him, Ya Rasulullah, as long as he died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, yes, he did. She said, how do you know, Ya Rasulullah? He said, I saw the angels come and provide him with his ghusl when he was alone on the ground. That Jamila could have easily said what some are saying today that I don't have a role model whose parents weren't religious and they were. Jamila is a role model for you. Her parents weren't religious, but she was. Then there are some who come forward and say, give me a role model who built a business and she got money, but the profit which she made, she gave towards Islam. I want to build a business like a philanthropy cause and I want to, give them, uh, to, want to give them money to Islam. Some will say you could give the example of Khadija. No, Zainab, the wife of Rasulullah, built a non-profit business where she would make handicrafts. She would sell them in Medina. Whatever money she would get, she'd give to the Sahaba who were living in Medina. Isn't she a role model? Then there are other women who come and say, Sayyid Ammar, I want to be religious, but I want to be modern. Can I be both? Yes, you can. Why aren't you allowed to drive fast cars? Yes, you can. Drive the fastest car. Why can't you wear Prada and Gucci and Vuitton? Wear all of them. There isn't a problem. Why can't you live in the best of houses? Live in the best of houses. In Nahj al Balagha, someone comes to Imam Ali and he says to him, My brother isn't religious because he's got this mansion now. Imam, tell him that you can't have a mansion because it means you will not be religious. Imam said, If in that mansion Allah is remembered and the Quran is read and Salat al Rahim is enjoined, then that mansion is a wasila to getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who come and say, I want a role model who's modern but religious. In the Quran, the queen of Sheba was the richest woman alive. Only Nabi Sulaiman could match her. She was modern without a doubt. Her throne was modern. Her clothes were modern. The way she lived was modern. When she entered the palace of Sulaiman, she began to walk on the water. But before she walked, she thought it's water, so she lifted her dress. It turned out to be the finest glass you will ever see. She said, if that is what the palace of Sulaiman is like, then how about the Lord of Sulaiman? What palaces does he have? She left everything to marry Nabi Sulaiman and join Islam. She remained modern, but religious. Someone like Rima was taught for years, you can't be modern and religious. 
She was taught the religious are always those who look backward. They don't look modern. They dress miserly. That's not Islam. That's culture. Islam said dress the best way you want to dress. Live the best way you want to live. But make sure there's a balance where you know there'll be a day you're accountable for the way you lived and the way you spent and the way you talked and the way you walked. Further than this, you notice all of these examples. Someone will come and say, but they were 1,000 years ago. Give me modern examples. In the 20th century, we had women who were modern great examples. Go and study their lives. Study the life of someone like Zainab al-Ghazali in Egypt. Have any of you come across Zainab al-Ghazali? Zainab al-Ghazali was an Egyptian Muslim woman who was imprisoned by Jamal Abd al-Nasr and later by Anwar al-Sadat. This Zainab al-Ghazali, three to five thousand women would attend her lectures in Egypt. She would speak out against Jamal Abd al-Nasr. She would speak out calling him Pharaoh because of the way he dealt with the people. They put her in prison. In her book, she wrote how she was tortured in prison, but that she was inspired by a woman who helped Rasulullah in the battle of Uhud. In the battle of Uhud, there was a woman who helped Rasulullah when he was alone on the mountain. Imam Ali was with him. Abu Dujan al-Ansari was with him. And this woman was alongside him. Zainab al-Ghazali, she was inspired by this woman. Jamal Abd al-Nasr put her in prison for years. She didn't stop. When she came out of prison, she kept on speaking out against the injustice that was happening in that society. Women were changing. She was empowering women. At the end, many women in Egypt come towards religion because of Zainab al-Ghazali. She's a modern example for you to use. Her three skins. She had the physical hijab, the social hijab, and the visionary hijab. How could I build a vision for Muslim women in Egypt? Ghazali was a visionary for Muslim women. Then you had a lady in Iraq by the name of Bint al-Huda. Original name Amina al-Sadr. The sister of Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Sadr. May Allah bless their souls. Do you know this? Allah. Do you know this Amina al-Sadr? the effect she had on women in Iraq and women around the Islamic world. In the 1960s and 70s, do you know how many Shia women in Iraq were miles away from religion, didn't have even the beliefs anymore, were affected by different streams of thinking? Bint al-Huda as a visionary, do you know what she did? She didn't come to women and say to them, you are not religious. You should be religious. This is the way you should be. No, no, no. She began to write small books or booklets. These booklets, do you know what she would do? In the 60s and 70s, in the Middle East, there were lots of novels of love stories going around, weren't there? So she would write booklets where there would be a type of love story. But the conversation between the man and his wife would be a conversation where religious concepts are introduced. For example, once she writes a story of a lady called Rehab and her sister Hassanat. These are two women in Iraq. Hassanat is religious, Rehab, is, uh, Rehab isn't religious, Hassanat is. And Hassanat has just been proposed to by someone who lives abroad. Bint al-Huda says that that person who's proposed to Hassanat would write letters to her. 